Yes, Jano, it is a good afternoon. A warm welcome. Thank you so much for choosing us this lovely Wednesday, the 15th day of November 2017. My name is Sandra Kaundagaba, bringing you stories that are making up headlines this afternoon on our news desk. Now, of course, quickly taking you through what is happening in Zimbabwe. A Zimbabwe Army spokesman, Major General S.B. Moyo, has said that President Mugabe is safe and sound, and the army was on, only targeting criminals around him. He insists that this was not a military takeover of the country, but a move to avoid violent conflicts. Addressing the nation on the state broadcaster, the military urges calm in Zimbabwe. Thanks for staying. Welcome back. I'm broadcasting live from Nile Avenue now on Two Business this afternoon. A delegation from Sudan is in Uganda to explore the, prospect, the prospects of investing in different sectors of the economy. The delegation headed by Abdul Latif Al Jai Jaimi, the Sudanese Minister of Agriculture, seeks to boost up bilateral ties with Uganda, especially in the area of trade. Evelyn Anita, the State Minister of Finance for Investment and Privatization, lauded the initiative and expressed government's willingness to trade as far as Sudan is concerned. The two-day state visit of the Sudanese President Omar al-Bashir has come with various business opportunities for Uganda. Uganda being one of the biggest trade partners with Sudan, especially in the agricultural sector, is striving to expand its trade ties. We give incentives to our investors. We start our incentives very range from tax incentives to land incentives to peace and security, which is the first number one incentive that you want as an investor. It is a liberalized economy. All the profit that you earn in this country, if you decide to say that now I am tired of this country, I want to go back, you are free to go with all the money that you've made in the country. No. A delegation led by Abdul Latif al ohaimi the Sudanese Minister for Agriculture, on Tuesday had a lengthy discussion with officials from trade and investments related government entities to benchmark and discuss issues pertaining to fostering the existing bilateral ties. The high-level meeting was held at the Minister of Finance head offices in Kampala. Of course, we have uh, memo of understanding in the field of agriculture with the uh, Ministry of Agriculture in Uganda, and this was signed in year 2004. And now we, are, we prepared an executive program for this uh, MOU, and uh, we are ready to discuss this with the Minister of Agriculture here and uh, to go for implementation. Coffee is Uganda's main export product to Sudan, earning the country about 365 billion shillings annually. Joli Kaguhanjire, the executive director, Uganda Investment Authority, showcased to the visitors Uganda's niche as one of the leading investment destinations in Africa. Uganda has been ranked number 12 to be the most attractive investment destination in Africa by the Africa Investment Index 2017. So among other countries in Africa, Uganda is also considered to be the best destination. We also have a, a recent report which came out in July. It shows that Uganda, together with India, are listed top as the fastest growing economies by 2025. And it will be growing at 7.7% annually. The Sudanese delegation and their Ugandan counterparts discussed opportunities for trade and investment, particularly in agriculture, agro-processing, manufacturing, pharmaceuticals and commodities, especially coffee, tea and cotton. Dennis Igoa and Charlotte Amuge for UBC Business. Now more on to the international scene. Moving to Kenya, Supreme Court of Kenya has started hearing a two, three uh, is, uh, petition seeking to once again annul the re-election of Uhuru Kenyatta as a president-elect. The petitions are before a six-member bench comprising of the Chief Justice David Maraga, Deputy Chief Justice Philomena, Philomena Mwilu, and Justices Jack, Jackton, 
Ojuang, Isaac Lenola, Jochi Ndugu, and uh, Smoking Wanjala. Underlying reason for the challenge is one of the petitions is that uh, the Independent Electoral and Boundaries Commission failed uh, to subject the candidates to refresh nominations for the polls as provided within the di dictates of the Constitution of Kenya. Petitioners are Jojo Muyu and uh, Kelef Khalifa and the businessman Harun Mwao. Same court nullified the August 8th elections in Kenya and as such became the first to do so on the African continent. News Janet is on to sports. A playoff action has continued with rain in champions. City Oilers marching into unprecedented 50th successive final. This follows victory over Betway Power at the Emptin Arena Lugogo. Playing in a ready jersey, City Oilers came into this game. Knowing the victory will secure passage to the 2017 National Basketball League final. They huffed and puffed against power side, but ultimately, the quality of players Oilers has is to passage with an 84-77 ceiling, a three straight semi-final win. The evergreen Stephen Omoni top scored for Oilers with 21 points, while Landry Ndikmana returned 15. They will in the final later this month, play either Kampala International University Titans or Pemba Warriors, whose best of five series is level one all, with game three on today at YMCA Wandegia. Thank you so much for watching and staying well from the top of the year till up now. I will have about few, uh, well, about, I will have about 15 minutes to talk to you, top it to the year. And of course, we have inverter programs coming here with this lovely Wednesday. So do stay with us. We come you with extreme classics. And not forgetting later on, you'll be having platinum wedding to inspire you. My name is Sandra Kahunde. Salute to the team behind the scene for making today's news journal a success. <laughs>